about five years ago, we asked Charlie Munger, we were sitting right there when he thought of Bitcoin, and he said, rat poison. Uh, back then, it was about $100 plus dollars per Bitcoin. Today, it's 9000 Is it still rat poison? Well, probably rat poison squared. Yo, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Nick and Griff Show. Public service announcement, don't forget to remind your friends and family that one Bitcoin will always be one Bitcoin. Now let's dive in. Today is Saturday, November 26th. It's just after Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. It's 8.48 a.m. I'm ready to talk about life. I'm ready to talk about Bitcoin. I'm ready to talk about money. I'm ready to talk about economics and the world. Maybe a little business. Maybe a little personal, a little professional. With one of my best friends, Griff. How are you doing this morning? Good. That was a hell of an intro. Yeah. I mean, the, the podcast could literally have been our conversation yesterday. Um, so I have an idea. Maybe that's what we should start this podcast with, is my idea. And my idea is, you know, how many student athletes do you know that had some sort of a clothing brand or a brand in college? Like at least you, everybody had like at least two or three a team, honestly. Yeah, minimum. There, there was a couple of those guys a team has to be right. And it wasn't ever that like I, I have no idea how much money these guys made. I always assumed it was kind of small time because it is. And it's like why? It's like do you guys have the time to run this brand? Do you guys like you know? And now there's the NIL, but the only thing about the NIL still is that you can use somebody's name, image, and likeness and make a lot of money off of them. You know, like, you're not making the money. You're just, you're an ad, which is cool, but, like, that's not... You're an ad. It's not, like, sustainable business. So, anyway, my thought now, because me and Nick were talking yesterday, and it's crazy to me that you can use the Lightning Network and Bitcoin wallets via Twitter so easily, and nobody's doing it yet. So, what if we create a Twitter page called... NCAA, you know, player, player brands, we go mm -hmm. to these players, we go, hey, how much are you guys getting these shirts for? I don't want you guys to stop selling your shirts. I don't want you to stop taking down your websites. Basically don't want any of that. How much are you guys getting these shirts for? Okay. See how much they're getting the shirts for. See if we need to fix that aspect of it or not. You say from the manufacturer? Yeah. See how much they're making these shirts for. See how much they're getting them for. Like, see what the product is. You know, then go to the next one. Go to the next one. Maybe you get four or five of these young guys doing whatever, doing shirts. And all you ask them is you go, hey, give me your manufacturer's contact information. We're going to purchase the shirts. We're going to sell the shirts. All we ask is for your active promotion in the in action where it's like on our Twitter page of this college memorabilia. We're selling these shirts for like, fucking 40% discount off of what they're doing on their own websites. And we're going to say we can do it because we have more capital and we can make a bigger purchase of shirts, but also we're just going to sell them on Twitter. These student athletes are on Twitter. Just all we're asking from you guys is, Hey, we're going to buy the shirts. We'll even pay you. We will pay you per shirt being sold as a student athlete. You can have $5 a shirt on top of what you're already doing. Just promote our web, just promote our Twitter page. And we're going to do all of our business through Twitter. And then you just start fucking looping in all these student athletes that can't, dude, they can't sell shirts. They have to go to Barstool. Barstool has to make them shirts. They don't have time to make shirts or sell shirts. Or Not that, not that some popular kid at Albany, some popular kid at Tulsa Community College doesn't have a 100 to 200 fans. I mean, I played junior college football and we had a good following of people that would buy our stuff and do our thing. So here's my point. We loop all of these people together. And this is just shirts. This would work for any product. But we get a bunch of small sellers. Think about that. Small sellers, same industry. We go, hey, we just want to be able to sell your products on our Twitter page. And we want to do it different where we're going to buy in bulk whatever your product is. And we want, to re we want our page to be about basically reducing costs. So we just offer sales on small time businesses shit. And I think we'd be able to do it because if we don't take over the operations aspect, meaning they buy it on our Twitter page and we 
boop, kick them to a link. Hey, you still need to get product from so and so. Still have to get it shipped from so and so, but we buy the product. We take them to Twitter. We transact over Lightning. Just think about all these ways to just mesh up other people's products, like Amazon, and just do it on Twitter. Because okay, so, so to demonstrate this, um, or just just the ease of use with Lightning and um, and Twitter. So I've got Griff's Twitter page pulled up on my phone. If you can see right here, there's a little money button. You see that little money button? If you tap on that, it, it brings up a, a, a little list here, an options menu. And you can tip $1, $2, $3, 5 or 10 or you can do a custom, right? And you can do at the bottom, it says Bitcoin or more. <laughs> so if you click on more, it just gives you a... a, a a Bitcoin address uh, that it'll copy to your paste or it'll copy to your, uh, or yeah, copy to your copy board or your clipboard. But anyways, I'm just going to send Griff $1 here. So I'm going to click the next button. Uh, it's going to say, send $1 open wallet. I'm going to open my wallet. Now I've got strike connected. So it opens up strike here, right? It opens up my strike. It opens, opens Griff strike. And it says, do you want to copy <laughs> the strike address? This lightning address. I'm going to copy it. Yeah, Strike has the ability to take lightning invoices. So I just copied it. Now I'm going to open up Strike. I'm going to open up Strike over here on my side. You see I've got $5 up here in my Strike balance. Um, I'm going to uh, click the button up here in this top left corner. I'm going to tap on that sucker. And then I'm going to press Paste. Since I already copied that, uh, that address, I'm going to say Allow Paste. And it pops up. There's my invoice, $1 strike tip. I'm going to confirm. And just confirmed. Griff, tell me whenever you get that notification on strike. Honey. Did you already get it? Yeah. I already got my bread. <laughs> and we can do that. Maybe not with strike, but the Lightning Network can and does have the ability to do that with an unlimited amount of money for Zero dollars and zero cents. Zero and dollars. Strike has made it so that if you are doing business with Strike and you have, let's say you have $7,000 sitting in your bank account on Strike, not buying Bitcoin, just the cash aspect of it, you can send it to your bank for zero dollars. They don't charge a fee. I've done it. I've seen it. Why don't they charge a fee? That's their secret sauce. That's why. That's literally, I've listened to Jack Mahler's interviews. He's never said exactly how they do it. But it has something very much to do with, what, general health? No. It has something very much to do with when you send your money from bank to wallet. Uh, he's basically just ba pasting. You know, HTTP is the protocol in which we use video. We have all of these websites. And that's basically all of one protocol, HTTPS. Like, we don't really understand that. I don't fully, fully understand that. But I understand what they're saying. The layer one of the internet or whatever we're operating on right now is HTTPS. We were never able to communicate like we do now without one global communication protocol. And we do use one globe. I mean, obviously, there's dark webs. There's all kinds of things on the internet when you're more advanced. I'm sure there's things off of HTTPS because the internet's a crazy place. But the communication protocol all over the world is that. And so all Strike is saying is, Bitcoin and Lightning invoices, they essentially need to act as the money protocol for the world. So what he does is he sends the money and then digitally, like with the banks, when he needs to send it in there, he just slaps on the Lightning invoice where the communications would be. And that Lightning invoice and that communication is everything. I mean, that's like, boom, they use the Lightning network super quick. They change your dollar to Bitcoin back to dollar like that. They just do it super fast, but the mechanism of changing it from Lightning to Bitcoin is the cheapest way to actually transfer payments anywhere because the network works, because Bitcoin works. You can you can say what you want about the price, but you don't need to trust the Bitcoin price for it to go like this. You don't. It's already you know, done. So he's saying to... well, like it should be more that than store of value. Like he he definitely believes in the price of Bitcoin in the network, Jack Mollers does in the strike, but he's like, dude. We should be using it for payments now. He's like, it is great now. He's like, you don't have to hold your money in Bitcoin. You don't have to get taxed. Just use the lightning rails and keep it in whatever currency you want or transfer it to the other currency. It's not Bitcoin. 
it's just lightning. And all he's doing is uh, all he's doing, doing some crazy computer science stuff. But essentially what he's doing and like what the secret sauce is, is he's just he's basically just kind of like teasing the Bitcoin network. He's not real. He's a Bitcoin company full out. He's a Bitcoin neobank. Shrike is the first neobank in Bitcoin in the world. That's really functional. And like you've used Strike. It's so easy to use Strike. It's way better than Venmo. If anybody's ever used Venmo and then use Strike, Strike, Strike shits on Venmo. Strike shits well, on Cash App. Yeah, I mean, like I can even do it just directly on Strike right now. I already said. Oh, and they don't charge $1 fees. Dollar tip. So you can see Griff's name up there. I'm just going to tap on Griff's name. I'm going to say, what is it for? Uh, let's just say we're on the podcast. And uh, I'm going to press the little button that says, how much do you want to send this for? And I'm going to say, I'm going to send this guy $2. So I said $2. I'm going to click next. It says, do you want to confirm it? And I'm going to confirm it. And so the reason that you're able to do that, and I literally already have it. You literally, and now you literally have that $2. We could do that with five hundred bucks. We could do it with, uh, you know, two dollars, a thousand dollars. You can do it with anything, and you don't have to use Bitcoin or buy or own or be subject to the volatility of Bitcoin to do that. Yeah, and with Strike, you have to understand Strike is not Bitcoin. It's not a layer one wallet. There are no words, so they're not your keys still, and. That's important to note. Now, is Strike a trustworthy partner? Of all the partners, you know, that there are in Bitcoin, and I'm so tired of saying this word, but crypto, as many partners as there are for digital quote unquote assets, even though I don't really I, like, I think it's proven now that it's not a thing. I know Ethereum has to probably fall, right? For everybody to be like, okay, maybe these guys aren't crazy. Maybe they're just trying to do the right thing. Yep. It's like, you guys are getting scammed. It's crazy. But it's not Bitcoin yet. It's just that Strike has a lot of liquidity partners. They actually were the same liquidity partner as FTX, and now they're no longer that. They've moved to other banks. Um, Strike and Jack Maulers is is very KYC. It's very um, mainstream. They're going. They're, I mean, they're going to be huge. My bet. I know we're making this November twenty sixth, twenty twenty two. Strike will be the biggest payment services app in the world. Not even close, bar none, I think by 2030, it'll be huge because of what they're doing. I mean, it's like, it's undeniable. They get they get all the benefits of anybody now who comes on to the Lightning Network. They're already there. They're already building it. They already know how to use it. They're already making all the conversations happen with politicians all over the world. So anybody who does anything else, all Strike has to do is go, that's a really good idea. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to use it too. That's a really good idea. Thanks. I'm going to use it too, because you might hate that about an open market, but it's easier to copy people. It's easier to just look at what the best guy is doing and be like, oh, I'm going to do that. I think I think that's what I'm going to do. And so anyway, Strike is huge. I mean, it's a huge development. It's not Bitcoin. It's a trusted partner. They just get everything for the cheapest spreads and how they make their money is within those really, really quick, small spreads, as well as when you send your Bitcoin from Strike to a layer one wallet. There's still a fee associated with it, but I've sent thousands of dollars from Strike to my wallet, and I think my biggest fee is like $4. So that's, again, better than any other service, but that's if you want to send it to actual Bitcoin. If you wanted to send money to your bank account, $0.00, zero cents, smoke strike. It only takes more days, so it'll take three or four days, but no fee. And I'm assuming instant will probably be coming. But that kind of leads me back to what I'm saying, Nick. <clears throat> I feel like via Twitter and like what that can actually be as a social media platform and more of a, a marketplace, more of a just like, it's honestly the freest place on the internet. I mean, you can go on there, you can say what you want, you can do what you want. You know, you're not going to get taken off unless it's by like Elon <laughs> for the love of whatever. Uh, and if you started a business on there, you know, you can trust running a business on there and you can take all the money. You don't have to pay Twitter. You don't have to pay advertisers. You don't have to do anything. You probably can get paid by advertisers, but I think that's not the move anymore. What do you think about that? Like, do you think the model of like, just, I don't know, you build something or 
you make a cool video and you make another one and you're just trying to get as many clicks as possible so that advertisers come and they pay you a bunch of money. Do you think that's over? Or do you think that that is still like the main way a lot of these digital entities do business and they're going to continue to do business? Because if anything, all Twitter is proving is that the internet was bought. Yeah. No, I think, um, I mean, I think like advertising just in general, right, is a fight for focus. It's a fight for potential customers, clients, patients, what, whatever the term is for the industry. It's about how much focus from our, you know, specialized demographic group of who we know buys our product. Um, right. But, dude, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is weird, man, because like you think about, you think about these influencers, right? You think about these influencers that are getting paid by companies because they've got these huge followings and stuff. Um, and, you know, I think that, I don't know, because the way that be, the way that the world economy works, the global economy, the, the local economy, the national economy, it's so based in the Internet now. It's so based in uh, e-commerce that, man, you can you can build a business. You and me, Griff, we can build a business selling t-shirts and hats or whatever the F, right? And right. we can utilize the infrastructure of the internet and advertising to push our product to hundreds of millions of people all over the world, right? And also because of the internet's infrastructure and, and now because of the infrastructure that's built around that, uh, namely the supply chain, even though it's still, uh, it's it's got issues right now that it's it's not been... It's not as strong as, as you'd hope that a, a global economy supply chain would be. But you and I can also market to those hundreds of millions of people and sell them product anywhere in the world, um, give or take, right? Uh, and we can ship product all around the world and, and potentially transact with everybody in, in on earth, right? Instead of instead of the way it used to be where you had to, you know, create a, a – a product or a service and you service maybe a, 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 a minor area around your town or around your city. Uh, maybe you have kind of a, you know, three or four or five States or whatever, right. That's maybe your territory that you sell in. Um, we no longer have to do that. And <clears throat> no, Nick, I think you're making a lot of really good points. And that's, that's exactly what I'm saying is there doesn't, Mm, how do I say this? There is a there is a genuine need, and I think this is the conversation that we're having. It's really scalable, you know. Like the internet. There's a need to have a social media that does everything for us. There's a need for a social media where we interact, and you can basically do your job. You can run your business. You can do what you want. You have your own digital identity on this platform, <clears throat> and everything you do, whether it be from Instagram or Twitter or whatever. You can see all of that, but there needs to be now because of Bitcoin, because of the Lightning Network and because of the way the Internet runs. It's amazing to me that there's not a more inclusive marketplace. It's wild to me that there's not a like, why is it so factioned off? Why is like you got to go to every website to go buy all these different products? OK, like, but what if I just wanted to get on uh, my Twitter and I wanted to find all of my vendors over Twitter. And then what if I wanted to find the rest of my partners over a social media platform where it's like, I don't know, like you kind of can go find your thing. You don't, you're not getting sold to as soon as you're on the website, uh, so to speak. I'm just saying like what you're saying, like there, the world is connected. You no longer need to run business the same way anymore. You still kind of do, but brick and mortar is out because I can sit here in my apartment, make a product, if I so choose, market it on Twitter. It blows up. Now I just have to figure out logistics and I'm making some good money. That changes a lot of things. You can sit in an apartment, prepackage food and send it to people and they pay for it. I mean, that's a real thing. You can <laughs> sit in your apartment and do almost anything and make money now. And I think what I am trying to say, and what I think is important about Twitter and Strike and what we're kind of talking about here is now you can do it for free. 
like you don't have to pay a centralized platform anymore. You might have to pay $8.99 to be on Twitter. That's pretty good. Twitter's like, yeah, you get all the benefits of everything we do at Twitter for $9. That's a, if you're a business, that's a steal. As long as you can trust that it's not like antiquated, that it's not like fake going into it in regards to what content they're pushing, what content they're not pushing. Uh, it's like the first iteration in social media, in my opinion, where it's like, hey, this isn't like Instagram anymore. This isn't like Facebook anymore. Even Facebook market, like Facebook marketplace is like an attempt. And as you and I both know, it's Facebook marketplace, I think struggles because you have to attach your real ID to selling products to your friends. It's like, it's kind of weird. It's like, if I wanted to make a Facebook page to sell stuff, that's what I would do. But then it still throws your location down. Then it still, you know, does this. Then it still does that. It's like a good try. But then you also have to put down your visa and all your information. And then you have to, and then you have to send the money. And then you have to work with FedEx. And then you have to, like, somebody is going to do it on Twitter for cheaper and easier, in my opinion, because you don't need to know that your location. You can be an anonymous account and Twitter is the only one who knows what your email is. You can probably partner with somebody and as soon as they click your little thing and they pay, boom, it's getting shipped out by your boy in the warehouse. Like Twitter is the first online marketplace where it has the potential to kind of unlock, I think, what we're saying. But I mean, I'm sure there's other ones out there, but Twitter's huge. So that matters. You know, they already have like, use it. And now they're not going to be ads. They're going to be like Twitter doesn't have as many ads anymore. So if you've noticed it, if you've been on Twitter, it's been so entertaining since Musk is on there because people are on there saying whatever they want, which is, in my opinion, wildly important to a marketplace. Since this is our financial podcast, it is important to the marketplace. It's easier for people to make decisions and get involved when they can trust people are just being people. When there's some outside actor like puppet mastering the situation like right now, I think people don't understand what's going on, but everybody's like, mm, yeah, this is like, mm, something's not fun. <laughs> like, something's off. Like, I mean, I've been listening to, and I don't know if this is happening around you, Christmas is tough this year, man. It's expensive now. Oh, yeah. You gotta make a lot of money to buy a lot of gifts now. It's uh, it's kind of wild, like how the world has changed in such a short amount of time. Because me and Nick are kind of younger people, but I think Bitcoin and online marketplaces are the like antithesis of what's going on in brick and mortar and currently kind of like what's going on in the marketplace. I think the internet's finally able to offer an alternative solution. But do you there's uh, do you think that there's any value in security checks and balances uh for a marketplace or should anybody and everybody be allowed to sell anything and everything that's such a good question what do you, you know that's, that's, i would love like, to hear what you think first because i don't know i mean that's tough well because i yeah i i agree with everything you're saying um uh, but also there is you know i think i think if you're a market maker if you're a market maker I think that you probably should have some responsibility to make sure that people aren't scamming people on, you know, on your platform. Now, I know that you're kind of talking about not using a platform as our platform or as a business platform, but using an existing platform as your business platform. Uh, I mean, there's still an infrastructure that's being used, right? Um, I think that because how easy would it be for, Joe Schmo to get on, uh, get on his computer and put, you know, whatever on, on some marketplace and sell your grandma a hundred thousand dollar, you know, pair of pair of shorts that got cats all over them or something, and that's the scam, right? Your grandma doesn't know, or so and so doesn't know. Now I know that there's personal response. You're telling me that doesn't already kind of happen. No, it does. It does. Uh, it, it does in certain senses, right? But it would happen a lot more if, if it was all completely free and open source, right? Um, and, and everybody was just able to do anything that they want. Now, I know that there's personal responsibility. I don't know. But, You're you talking know, about like, corruption, though, right? You're talking about corruption in regards to, okay, hey, we're on Twitter. 
hey, everybody, go sell your shit on Twitter via the Lightning Network. Go just start using the Lightning Network right now, even though pretty hard for government and or entities that we have that are supposed to track corruption and are supposed to track fraud and are supposed to track, you know, these type of complaints. They would struggle doing that so right now, not because Bitcoin and Lightning is not transparent. Uh, you know, it's I don't know how transparent Lightning is. I think in certain respects, Lightning is not transparent. It's like pretty easy to get a Lightning wallet and like nobody knows who's sending what. The layer one's far less transparent because you have an address because everybody sees activity on the layer one. It's pretty easy. It's which is a good thing. I mean, like you don't want a lot of crime. I mean, I'm not arguing on the crime side of things here. My argument is that you're talking about corruption in regards to what, like the fiat system and money, like right now, as it stands today in the current financial system. No, no, I no, like no, 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 no. no there's ever been. It would happen. It would probably bad happen. Actors, then there's more bad actors than there's easier. ever been. It would happen easier in a system like what you're talking about. Where yeah, how about if you give me your grandma's retirement fund and put it on my cool new exchange called FTX? It's going to be huge. It's crypto. It's no, safe. I'm the no, safest no, crypto exchange. The SEC just approved me. Actually, the CEO of our company, her dad used to run the SEC. That's how safe my crypto exchange is. So give me grandma's $200,000 and let me invest it. Okay. Well, I'm not saying FTX is not safe or that FTX is safe. I'm saying if, well, right now, think of it, think of Facebook Marketplace. You, you used that, for example, earlier. In order to, and I don't, and this isn't confirmed, I don't know, I'm just assuming that this is probably true, you said it, but um, in order to transact on with Facebook Marketplace, in order to use Facebook Marketplace to buy and to sell, you have to go through certain identity and security checks to make sure that at least you meet some basic criteria of, you know, upstanding citizen that you're, you can do these things. Right. Because now right. also now, but hold on. Now, what do you think about this? Because I don't think. Twitter I, well, is verifying people. Well, I, I think, um, I think that if you're going to live and operate within some type of infrastructure, that there should be some type of, there should be a rule that you're you if you're going to use this infrastructure that you're going to follow the rules of the people who create and run and operate the infrastructure think about it like this griff whenever somebody comes on our podcast as a guest they don't get to just run the show as if they're the host right we are the hosts of the show you have to follow the rules of our infrastructure of our podcast now think of it more on a macro scale on a global country, on a country level, if uh, now it, this is where it, it really gets more and more gray, the, the larger it goes out because you're talking about more and more people. Uh, but if I'm thinking if if somebody wants to come to America, they got to follow the rules and regulations of what it means to be an American citizen. Right. I think that we could agree that that's a good thing. Right. I mean, or should they just yeah, come right. and just. Just do whatever they want. Doesn't matter. You can just come over here. You can kill people. You can steal. No, that's not. That's not my argument. I mean, also, you could throw. throw um, I mean, now we're talking. We're talking about currently. We're talking about immigration. Are we talking about immigration or are we talking about digital marketplaces? I mean, because Dude, it's, it's, it's totally. Same thing. This is what I'm saying. That if 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 somebody shouldn't if somebody shouldn't be able to come to America and kill and steal. Then there is then there is a, a crossover point, right? Okay, if that's the line, or if that's if that's wrong to do, then what? Then where is the line? Like where where does the line start and stop? I mean, bro, somebody can somebody no, can think, literally run into eat themselves to death and get full benefits before sixty five on Medicare A and B, and you'd be paying for them for. 40 plus years as a citizen of the United States. Or you can have people come over from another country and provide cheaper labor. The problem is the system that brings the people in. The problem is the checks and balances that are currently in place. They obviously suck. They're obviously no good. 
obviously the way that we run things currently is no good. So the conversation in regards to like back to the digital marketplace, the structure is not there in Bitcoin yet. The structure is not really there for a Twitter to go, hey, we're not going to do the whole like, you know, sell your digital identity and sell, you know, ads, you know, because you're a user here. Um, we're going to turn this into like, you know, you pay me nine dollars and, um, you know, maybe even Twitter gets smart and goes, uh, fuck strike. Like, yeah, you guys use our Bitcoin node and you guys process all your transactions on here on our Twitter marketplace. And Twitter now becomes the arbiter of what is right and what is wrong, which even in my opinion, as you know, like trust is something that you should never really do. Yeah. Um, but that seems like a relatively, I mean, just and fine way to, you know, see who can sell something on a digital marketplace. I only argue, and if we're talking about immigration, which I do think is a different conversation, but I understand what you're saying. You're saying, you know, somebody can just go on Twitter and just try to defraud the shit out of everybody once there's like, you know, there is Facebook marketplace now. I mean, I'm sure there's people that go on there and try to defraud people all the time. I'm sure there's people that put up nicer pictures of what, you know, the product should like look like than what it actually is. Well, they probably don't have very many stars as a seller, so you're probably not even going to like buy from them anyway. I don't know. So it seems like there's natural check, like de- checks and balances actually in the digital world as opposed to the physical world are much easier. Because it's just like, hey, community, does this guy suck? Yep. Yeah, don't buy from him anymore. And then you make sure that you just kind of track this dude. I mean, like if he starts making different accounts, that's what you pay $8.99 for. So that they have like 10 people at the warehouse that are just going like, yeah, that motherfucker is just trying to sell everybody fake stuff. Now, in regards to immigration, the only things you did leave out, cheaper labor, people who actually want to be a part of something. I mean, like... The most patriotic people I fucking know are illegal immigrants. I mean, like, honestly, I, the people in America now, I mean, the world, the where we're at, you could argue that this is a hellhole. I mean, you could argue that people don't want to work. You can argue that people literally just want to be paid off by the government and they don't want to do anything and they're extremely entitled and they want their social... Like, you could argue that this is the laziest version of America since 1775. I mean, literally, since the iteration of America, we are as soft as it gets. And in regards to what we politically debate about on one side of things, I'm not going to go issue to issue on the podcast. But Weimar Germany did the same thing. And then Hitler became Fuhrer. That's literally what happened. Because people started talking about all this crazy stuff that didn't matter. I mean, it just became like a sex cult over in Germany because of how money turned out. You know, the situations are different. The world is different. But we clearly haven't learned from our history because uh, there's just so many things that we shouldn't really be caring about right now. That that's all people talk about. And that's like directly because of the way that what we're talking about right now, the checks and balances right now, why should CNN, CNN should not be able to speak to millions of people. They should dismantle the network. The network should already be dismantled, but because CNN is so powerful and there's so much money, they're still able to shout shit at your 65 year old grandma. And so she's still like, I don't know, like enslaved by Joe Biden, but you're talking to her about like real things and she has no real opinion whatsoever. The same goes for Fox news. They can peddle all the stuff they want in the world. And there's zero real checks and balances there. And yet Trump's Twitter account was too much. I read Trump's tweets. His tweets really are not that crazy. And Twitter did the most, being like, this is a lie, this is a lie. It's like, dude, just let the world decide if it's a lie or if it's not a lie. I mean, like, it doesn't, it shouldn't really matter, like, who we elect every four years anyway. The government should be this big. The fact that it matters so much is a problem because they have taken a lot of power, you know? I mean, like, they really, really have. So this really does lead all the way back into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is about the decentralization of all of that power. Bitcoin is about empowering the local market. Bitcoin is about empowering the little guy. Bitcoin is because now, like we just said, all you need to do is set up a few nodes in Sacramento and just run the nodes and go out to every business and go, hey, if you get on strike, can you just, you know, use my lightning node for all of your transactions? I'll charge you like 10 basis points. I'll charge you like 0.1%, 0.01% of transactions. How does that sound? 
And all of a sudden, now you created a circular economy of transactions over the Lightning Network for Sacramento. I mean, like, you have to build out the application, or you have to use Strike, or you have to do this, or you have to do that. But it's entirely possible and out there. And I think that's, you know, that's what we're talking about. That's what this podcast is about. It's so easy to have a conversation nowadays with somebody and get them to realize it's like, yeah, so you're like really trusting that one person or those three people or that quote unquote uh, the SEC or the CFTC or the WEF or the United States government, the Congress, like all these things. I think people need to understand they don't do anything. All they do is take money. So therefore, all they do is take value away. And they make things slower. That's why they created taxes so that people like you and I take advantage of the system. We're incentivized to take advantage of their system so that we provide cheaper housing for people because it's hard for government to build housing. Like that's the easiest example. So I think anything in regards to Twitter, decentralizing marketplaces, decentralizing media, so to speak, going like, yeah, bro, it's like nine bucks. You have a check mark. Yeah, like maybe you have more followers, but it's going to look the same. Why? Well, because he's a person. You're a person. This is a business. You're a business. You guys shouldn't have an advantage from literally like what people see. You guys both get check marks and then people will evaluate. I mean, it's it is fundamentally changing social media. And I think it will be successful because smaller people will eventually realize it's like, hey, if I really want to do something, I'm going to go to Twitter. I'm gonna, if I'm really going to be a writer, I'm going to publish on Twitter because I immediately have this similar advantages as CNN, which honestly, Nick, you should. We should be getting, you know what news you should get? The most unbiased local coverage of whatever event, of whatever situation it may be. That is what you want. You don't want any national news. National news is, I think national news is bad. It's a plague on society. So, yeah, and that long other words rant, it doesn't really matter what subject you talk about, in my opinion, any central platform that can get disenfranchised and it just kind of like what they do gets moved out to Twitter users, I'll follow the Twitter users. Let me follow you. That's easy. I don't want to turn on my TV anymore for fake news. I just want to look on my Twitter account and see what I get that's real. And dude, I mean, honestly, best example right now going on in crypto. FTX is still going to speak at the at the uh, Wall Street Journal convention with like a senator in Mark Zuckerberg. So clearly legacy media has like, I don't know, their claws in a lot of stuff, you know. But yeah, it's crazy to me, dude. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense. That's why I don't really agree with like, Anything in regards to, well, what are we going to do, though? Like, what regulation are we going to have? I don't know. I, that's like, honestly, that's like not what I'm thinking about first. I'm thinking build a solid foundation of money and how you transact it. And that will take care of things more. I mean, it'll be really hard to create a, you know, think about this Twitter marketplace because lightning is so great and transactions are so free. But Bitcoin is just skyrocketing in price. So naturally, people are still going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to spend my Bitcoin. But if they just knew that you don't have to spend your Bitcoin to use Strike, it's just cheaper, they would all be on it. They would all be using it. And then they would fundamentally be like, I'm using an application, a Bitcoin application. I don't even know it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, think, our think, biggest about, problem. think about how capital allocates whenever real money is valuable, right? Whenever the money that we use to transact is actually valuable. Because exactly, that's exactly the situation that you run into is exactly what you just said, right? Let's say that Bitcoin is tearing through the freaking markets. It's exponentially increasing right now, going through another huge bull market. And I want to buy this $100 pair of whatever, the, you know, whatever the example, right? right? I'm going to buy a $150, $200 pair of shoes. Okay, now I've got a choice to make. Do I prioritize buying this pair of shoes that's a couple hundred dollars or is parting with that bitcoin that is appreciating not worth it to me right is it going to be worth more for me to hold the bitcoin or to buy this thing and right now i think because dollars are worth a whole lot of not shit right 
the the only the only value that dollars have right now are the liquidity of the network. That's what the value of the dollar is. That's right. where Bitcoin is not currently. And so, I think a huge piece is the the size of the liquidity, right? The the liquidity pool. You know, like we we've talked about this so many times here recently. Is you know, Bitcoin is still so small. Its monetary network is so small. Strike and and the Lightning Network is so small. People don't even know about it. And and right. you know, this is also another reason why uh, why money there there tends to only be one money. There's not multiple, right? There's not. There's not base layer money and then stable coins and then fiat. and then, No, it, it all flows to one source because the liquidity of a monetary network is what makes the network more useful, right? If there are 10 people in your monetary network or if there are <laughs> 100 million people in your monetary network uh, and you can only transact within that monetary network, which one is better? The one with 10 people or the one with 100 million? We know the answer is obviously 100 million, right? The liquidity pool is larger, and uh, and and Bitcoin, although does not have that right now, is continuing to grow as more and more people um, understand and and get in and start utilizing the technology. Um, and Griff, to your point, we've talked all this all this time previous about um, the Lightning Network with Strike specifically and Twitter um, using the Lightning Network. Uh, you can you can take advantage of the efficiencies of the technological innovation of the Lightning Network on top of Bitcoin, and you don't even have to use Bitcoin at this point. You can still do you can still use the efficiencies with fiat dollars, right? That's I mean, why it's so great. That's that, why the Lightning Network and Bitcoin is so powerful. It's like yes, it's a better money over the long term, but isn't it important too? Like just isn't it important in like the idea that you're going on that you can just just touch it, like touch it and then oh, and it makes it better. Just like you know what I'm saying. One of those. Just, just own a little bit of it. Just yeah, like little. all you gotta do. That's all Strike does. They just go, boop, and then they get to do everything better than other businesses because it's cheaper. Bitcoin, Neo. I mean, like it's so cool. I heard Jack Mahler's talk about it because everybody talks about. It's looked at like an exchange because it's where you buy your Bitcoin and you'll send it and you have the best. It's the cheapest place to buy Bitcoin, actually. It's the best spread. Um, but he's like, we're actually a neobank. He's like, we're Venmo. We're a cash app. We're the first one. He's like, he's like, that's what we are. He's like, you know, once you have our debit card and Visa and NCR and all these guys start using us and everything for strike users is 3% cheaper everywhere you go. Um see how see how nice it is to be on the wait list right now <laughs> like to actually get that first i mean like it's just that's what uh i didn't know this you know jack Mullers is like a chess player me and you need to play some chess nick do you want to play chess online sometime I'm, I'm i'm down to play some chess you can play it like actually on your phone they've got an apple game for it yep yeah, i'm uh, play some chess. smart but he was like he always says pawn to e4 get on the wait list yeah, seriously, and use our use Nick's code. Nick, what's your name on there? <laughs> in case anybody's listening, minute forty three. You'll find you'll find the link in the description. <laughs> uh, yeah, link in the description. Um, but no, dude, it's fuck, it's crazy. But you know, after this conversation, that's what I'm saying. I think you read, like the opportunity to do something on Twitter. The opportunity oh, yeah, to utilize this is big. Before we kind of wrap up the, that conversation, I got to ask another piece. What? Because I think that also uh, I disagree on part of this, and right. that would be the capital allocation for an open source project that is decentralized versus uh, the capital allocation for uh, a company that is centralized. Take Strike, for example. Strike has done what it's done and has been able to create the platform that it's been able to create because Jack Mahler's has a vision and he's able to delegate uh, the work to create that vision, right? And uh, and he is incentivized to do that as well as his company, as well as the people that he's hiring, right? Because he's paying them and ultimately he is making money through the, the company that he is creating, all the partnerships that he's formed. Yeah. So, uh, so so I think that that is, is huge, right? That's a capitalism, right? That's 
open market capitalism at work. Um, but then I, I, I understand and agree that it would, man, it would be cool if we had strike and, and nobody owned or controlled strike. Strike was just strike. But I, I think that it takes significantly longer to get to that point in a decentralized network uh, or uh, sorry, without without a central person that is setting a, vis a vision and making the decisions, I don't think that you're able to get to a point of creating a platform uh, or utilizing a platform that, that operates well, that's smooth, that never has any issues that need to be dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying strictly from the, yeah. the operation side, the maintenance side, because these things don't just you don't just put them together and then they just work forever, right? Like there are like issues and bugs that you, that'll come up over time as more people use it. Like as, losing your liquidity partner in prime trust after they, you know, after FTX goes bankrupt for $42 billion. Well, sure. Let's try to handle that quite quickly. They were able to do it pretty fast, which is, you know, it's important to always see how bad things are going and then be like, so what are the companies that don't really seem to give a, sh a shit, like what their stock price is or how, what the public perception of them is? And they just keep delivering on good business and nothing fucks up. And Strike is exactly that. I mean, they found new liquidity partners right away. I've never had an issue. I think there was an issue one time during this whole thing where like you couldn't buy for two seconds at the lowest price. It was like doing it for 16000 instead of like fifteen five, which, you know, like people get upset about. But um I don't, you know, that it's strikes going to be tough to beat. I guess like what I would say in regards to like centralized moves things along quicker. Strike makes it quicker. And because of the way lightning works, it's like, you know, the bigger the lightning network gets, ultimately the bigger strike gets, even though it might not have, you know, quote unquote market share of the same proportion, they'll get bigger. And strike will always be big because you can direct deposit your checks to it. So it's like it's a neo well, bank in that sense where it's like it's better for those. The, the 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 retail experience, the retail experience, whether in real life, in person, a brick and mortar store, or online, some online platform somewhere, um, I think that that retail experience is best suited as a centralized entity, right? Because. Um, you know, in, in different business models are different. Or like, right? know that the liquidity is there. Is that why you feel like that's important? Or well, so, so I because you still need dollars. Because well, I think the big piece is that this is, and you, you and I have talked about this on on platforms for Bitcoin, right? As far as uh, Strike, Strike is a user experience, right? We're no longer creating to, you know, like crypto, right? Who can create the best money? You know, it's not who can create the best token. It's not that. It's we've got this now established system of Bitcoin that we know works with security, with decentralization, right, with simplicity. We know that this works. Now it's no longer competing for the best money. It's competing for the best user experience to operate with this, right? And so I think that I think that you utilize, uh, not necessarily Strike, we'll say Lightning and Bitcoin. You utilize those two infrastructures but then build a centralized platform that utilizes these things so that you capture the, uh, the efficiencies of this innovation here while also, because, because Griff, the fact of the matter is, the way that you think business should be done, the way that I think business should be done, the way that anybody else thinks business should be done, there's going to be little differences, right? You and I are probably pretty similar on, on most things as far as how we think business should be run. But man, somebody else might think that business should be run completely different. And in a free open market, they should have the liberty and the right to go do that, right? Um, assuming that they're following kind of the general consensus rules, right? The general consensus rules, which I think is which I think is big. This is true of Bitcoin, right? You you can utilize Bitcoin, but you have to follow the protocol. If you follow, yeah, the protocol, I mean and do whatever here and i think that it's very extremely important as human beings right because i this is also a, a perspective uh, of mine i believe that we are not perfect as human beings we will make mistakes we will do uh not the right thing every single time right and i think that it is probably good to have a general consensus of hey 
let's not do these things. And when we do that thing, let's make sure that we do this. Now, see, but that's where you get into issues with, with big government now where it's like, okay, we want to make sure that everybody's free. Okay, well, now to make sure that everybody's free, we got to make sure that, you know, we got to make sure that this is, is proper here too. You can't do that. And then you get into that and you think, oh, well, he did that because of this. So you can't do that either. Right. So then so then you got to start trying to figure out, OK, where do we draw the line? But I, I go all, all the way back to say, I think that the retail experience is best suited as a centralized uh, as a centralized establishment, because it, that's that's free open markets. Right. If everybody had to run a business the exact same way, well, then there would just be a bunch of the same businesses. Um, well, we don't have that now. I mean, like we're relatively close. Like there's Square, there's Visa. Um, I mean, there's a lot of banks, so to speak. But there's one Fed. So I don't know. Like when you're talking about centralized in regards to the retail experience, meaning how we pay at the retail experience and how people are getting paid. No, 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 not paid, not paid. I'm I'm saying you utilize the decentralization of the Lightning Network and of Bitcoin. But the types of products, how you market your products, how much money you're making on your products, who you're getting your products from, uh, the the branding that you use for your for your business, um, you know, how many types of products do you want to have? Uh, you know, do you want to just do confused? Like, like okay, you know what I'm saying? like oh, you, you mean like, like one like Amazon? Yeah, no, this is what I'm saying. So think, think about Amazon. Think about the difference between Amazon and Facebook Marketplace. But then let's assume that both of those now are interoperable with the Lightning Network and Bitcoin. And you can buy anything and everything utilizing the infrastructure of the Lightning Network and Bitcoin. Now, we know we know with certainty that the final settlement, the final settlement layer of Bitcoin is secure. We have we don't have to trust that that is going to work, but the centralized entity of Amazon, the platform and Facebook Marketplace, the platform, although they do similar things, right, and allow people to now they, they do different. They, obviously, they got different things, right? Facebook Marketplace is more like, hey, I got this old laptop. I need to sell it or whatever. Right. There's a lot of that. There is retail stuff where people can buy new products. Amazon tem, tends to be new products that you can buy from manufacturers, right? Um, but then you got Alibaba that's like, you can go, go back buy to stuff. Your I'm so confused. So what are you, but what are you talking about? Like talking this about is, having- This is what I'm saying. Because what it seemed like you were saying earlier is that we create a decentralized marketplace in that anybody and everybody can just come on and create what they want, which, you know, which I, I, I think you've also kind of talked too about uh, with, with social media platforms, right? Um, think of it like this, right? Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna create a, let's just call it um, open source social media, right? That's what it'll be called, open source social media. And let's say that you start with an empty room. That's your page. Your your page is an empty room. You can blow out walls. You can move this around here. You can paint that. You can add this thing in here. You can create it to be whatever you want it to be. But you start with this kind of. You know, that that kind of seems like what it sounds like uh, you're saying that we should do, sure. which I think uh, I, I think is not necessarily kind of um, not really. I think we my, should my, just use my, the existing my system. Here, my idea here is that if we were to create a marketplace for NIL, you know, type stuff where we're going to we're going to try to create a platform where all these um, college athletes can link together and create brands and sell little, you know, products, right, to the people that that like them, right? Something simple like T-shirts and hats and game-worn gloves and, you know, shit like that, whatever it would be, right? I think that that is better suited as a centralized platform that you and I, that you and I make the decisions on versus, uh, versus a decentralized platform uh, where nobody can make the decision as to what is what and who is who because – if nobody is there to put the thing together and to organize the thing, then who's going to organize it? You know, who keeps everything going the right way? Who yeah, puts I agree with you. We need, we, we, we essentially, we would be the store. You need a store. What you're saying is you like stores more than you like 
people selling shit. Like, you wouldn't want to walk on a street and instead of stores, people just stood around and sold you shit. Like, you know, you'd, you'd prefer... You think you think in a modern economy, and you think you know the invention of the store. I want to go buy. I'm going to go to the shoe store where I. Know I think the invention of the store was a really good idea too. I'm not disagreeing with you on that at all. <laughs> at all, I'm so glad that we got to the end of that. I'm like, I, what is this guy like? I agree with you. I I think more. I think Twitter's good too. I think Instagram is good. I don't think centralized platforms in a sense, are bad. What I think sucks and what Bitcoin and Lightning does for people in the marketplace in regards to decentralizing things is that literally just from a monetary perspective, it's very easy. It's like, okay, like how much does it cost for me to use your page? Okay, I don't even have to pay to be on Instagram. Cool, how, do, how can I take payment on Instagram? Oh, you guys don't have anything yet. Cool. So like, hey, guys, Venmo me. Hey, guys, do this. Hey, guys, you could say send to my lightning, whatever. Twitter already has lightning payments. They already have it interoperable. It's already done. So that matters. And then the second thing I'm saying that matters in regards to Twitter versus other storefronts or other online storefronts or why I wouldn't want to start them there is very soon you're going to be able to pay to be on Twitter, which I want. I want to pay to be on Twitter. I do not want uh, basically advertisers and people who would essentially be competing against me able to like shadow ban me <laughs> because they have more money than me, which is what's been happening. So that's why I think Twitter in more sense is de it is decentralizing because if you are no longer the product and you're able to use Twitter essentially for $9, bro, I mean, they're going to have businesses on Twitter. And now that you can take payment on Twitter and you're a business on Twitter, what's stopping Adidas from going, hey, guys, like, just tip me on strike on Twitter. Here's our Black Fridays. Here's our Cyber Monday sale. If you tip us on strike, we'll give you 33% off instead of 30% off at the other store. Or it can probably even get better than that if we're being honest. So that's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. The advantage right now is on Twitter. That's why Twitter has the advantage. You're going to be able to go on there and do your shit and basically be able to. Tr the only thing that you can trust is that, you know, you're not going to get shadow banned. You're going to you can kind of trust like, you know, where the decisions are made and you can take payment on there. You can do all those kinds of things. Do I think Instagram and all these guys are just going to let them do that and not follow suit? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, like Facebook's not ever hasn't been able to do it. Um, Instagram hasn't been able to do it. TikTok is most certainly not going to do it. So I don't know. I mean, dude, Twitter is a little bit ahead. You also forget like Jack Dorsey was the one who put the Bitcoin wallets on Twitter right before he left. Like he was like, here, Lightning and Bitcoin work together. I'm out. But in regards to our argument, I think all storefronts, I think are, yeah, on it's, more an advancement on just like laissez-faire, just like barter economics where you're just like buying and trading shit on the, you know, on the port because we don't have any uh, infrastructure. So you got to live next to rivers and shit. But I do think yeah. that like Walmart, Nick, I love, I was at Walmart yesterday. God bless Walmart. I love yeah. Walmart. Do I think Walmart should use lightning to make everything that they're doing cheaper for people? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think they think that too. I think I, I don't think they're going to disagree for long. Visa charges you three basis points. Now, that I'm not saying they're. I'm not even saying Visa's wrong for that. Visa ha is a business. There's never been an alternative. I'm not a hater. I'm trying to figure out. Okay, how do I build the centralized thing on Bitcoin now? Because it's hard. It's going to be hard to do that because it's like I offer you a product and a service. Okay, I need to add a new product line. Hey, why don't you come uh, sell your shit from under my company name? Why? It, that's it's going to be become that. What advantage does a big company have right now that small companies don't have? So why are they able to buy them all the time? It's hard to grow business. I mean, it's really hard to like turn down big business. It's hard to grow fast. It's hard to pay people. It's hard to do the whole thing. But if you have to pay 3% for every transaction, if you have to wait all these days for your money, if you have to do all these things,
makes it a hell of a lot harder. So I was kind of think and in regards yeah, to Twitter, well, think about, think it's about like a lot of marketing as well. Just be on Twitter. It's probably will be enough marketing in the future for your business to just be active on Twitter. And it's like, oh, people can find you. I mean, like it is getting bigger by the day. And it's not and it's global as well. So it's like I right, think it's um, I think a huge piece on on this topic of retail and you know, like normal people buying normal things. I think it's huge when you think about the disruptions and the distortions that misallocation uh, of capital can create. Think about these huge companies that have so much capital at their disposal. Um, and then think about, have you ever gotten in, have you ever been in a pool in the summer with like one of those big uh, inner tube floaties and you bounce up and down and you create all the waves in the pool? Have you ever done that before? Sure. Do you do that like this summer or... Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we've done that. We'll do that in the summer stuff. We'll get out there with the kids, you know, make a big wave. <laughs> it'll be fun. But uh, anyways, you know, think about that, right? Like you got, you got like grown adults on one end of the pool and you got four kids at the other end that are just ready for this wave pool. And we get in there and we're a lot bigger. We're moving a lot more capital in this sense. We create a lot of waves and distortions in the free open market that is the pool, Right. But now assume that these, the kids at the other end of the pool, all of these other companies that don't have near as much capital as these big companies, the adults that are heavier, that weigh more at the other end of the pool, and they, they don't have as much capital, they don't have as much weight, and they aren't assuming and waiting for these distortions to come and don't understand and realize that they are actually seeing distortions. They're not seeing they're not seeing the market equilibrium go up and down, up and down, up and down. It's distortions that are created by these huge companies because they're misallocating capital because the base layer money is fraudulent. It's counterfeited money. It's not real. The cost of creation is zero. That creates a bad problem in a free open market. And then you get because of that, because people are seeing mixed signals they may end up making a decision based on a distortion that was based in uh, this broken fundamental money system, which then further creates more distortions in the market, right? And, and, as, and as those distortions uh, go further and further down the line, because it's smaller and smaller capital allocators, those distortions get smaller and smaller and smaller, but they go out so far and wide just like if you were to throw a big rock, you throw a big rock out in the, out in some water and you're going to have a big splash and then you're going to have those ripples, those distortions that are going to move out further and further and further until you can't even see them anymore, right? That's literally what happens with the pools of liquidity in the fiat system. It creates distortions in the market. Now now let's now let's assume now let's assume our pool is halfway full and bang overnight uh, you know, we fill up the pool the rest of the half away, right? Well, now, now, now there's now there's more now there's more pool, right? Now there's more water. There's more free open market, um, and let's assume that uh, the level of the pool c coincides with the price of products. Now, but now everything costs more, and and does everything really cost more? No, it doesn't actually cost more. You just have to pay more broken fiat dollars for the same things because the liquidity pool has increased so much and so rapidly that we can actually experience it. That's called inflation. That's called inflation, right? That's just, that's weird. You know, the distortions in the market because of capital misallocations. And, but I do, but I do think that- It's all weird. It's so centralized, weird. Man. Centralized retail with decentralized, correct, real money, I think is going to win for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, the fact that you can, we have the ability to separate money and state now, just like church and state, it's pretty inarguable that the creativity and, like, the love for America is what drove us to our success over the last 200 years, or what, you know, we've been around for a while, 150 years. It's not that crazy to see why our generation is not as patriotic <laughs> why well, we're not joining the military, why we don't want to be involved, because I have a few reasons why, but I think one of the main reasons is like, just straight out the rip, how much money do you need to make to own a home in the state of California? A lot. 
and you need to do it for a while and you need to have a lot of security. <laughs> it's like, how much money do you need to have to just own a home and have a wife and two kids? That kind of stuff matters. And yeah. in America, it's getting harder and harder and harder. So it's hard for anybody to be like, oh, I love this game, the game where we rent everything and own nothing. Nobody wants that except for like the people at the very top and kind of what you were just talking about. It's so distorted, dude. Like, <laughs> it's like they can fill up the pool, they can drain the pool, they can, well, they can't drain the pool. That's the only thing that they can't do. They can't Once they the add water, they can't, they can't, there's no sun. It doesn't evaporate. Taxes, I guess, more or less, are the only way that they can make it evaporate. They've got, a, they've got a tiny little drain that, that, that drops a couple of drops a day, and, and that's about they don't it. make money. The government doesn't make money. That's not they a thing. Can't, they, they can't drain the pool. They can't but kind of what you were just saying, I do agree with, like, decentralized exchange, or sorry, decentralized money, um, you know, centralized, decentralized, centralized marketplaces, so to speak. But, but what you're saying is separation of church and state, separation of money and state, <clears throat> Basically, it's like, okay, well, do you want to... America is a constitutional republic. It's not a democracy. It's a constitutional republic. If you are a nation who just overthrew, you know, your dictator for the first time in 30 years, and you want to start a new constitutional republic and use Bitcoin, you have an opportunity to actually have a real constitutional republic. We've, you know, there's never been... If, if money is, is not Bitcoin, if money is not decentralized, if money is not sound... If it can be inflated, the Rothschilds, the people at the top, those guys, the, the, the people who are funding the central banks, the people who had the money to start the Fed, the people who had the money to fund other countries, the IMF, like the people who actually have all of this money, they inherently have so much power. It distorts everything, like Nick is saying. It, it distorts Everything so much as we don't even know who has all of the power. We really don't know what's going on. Like, it's pretty nuts. Even Joe Rogan has said, he's like, do you really think every four years the free world just elects a new leader? No, we don't do that. There's no way anybody does that. And that's how distorted money is. All the propaganda that's spewed. I mean, like, people are so lost right now. And it's mostly because of how shitty money is. Because they're able to just distract the shit out of you so many different times. Because... We have none of it, and the very few have all of it. And I'm not a socialist, but in a constitutional republic in a free marketplace, I highly fucking doubt that any of these people would have this much money. There's no way. And even if they did, they have to build a business that has to be sustainable. I don't, I don't know. Like, they have to build it in a better way. They can't use it using debt. So, in essence, like, you have to get people that actually want to work for you, so you probably are paying people. I, mean, I just think it's better all around. I mean, once you have sound money, even if you have somebody who cracks the code or builds an Amazon, it's going to be a lot harder to sustain that Amazon. You literally will, if any time in a Bitcoin standard, even if there's another currency, if you use yield or you use debt or you try to use your Bitcoin as collateral, you're risking it all, basically, because there will be no too big to fail. You will just fail and the Bitcoin will get collected by everybody else. Everybody will be like, uh, thank you for your Bitcoin very much. and But I agree with you. I mean, this is why I agree with you. It's because um, too big to fail should never have been a thing. And if it's money is decentralized from the government, from the marketplace, even if you have socialism, maybe socialism works. But the problem with socialism has been the government is the one in charge of the money, too. That is the problem. Maybe socialism works. Maybe we all don't need to be paying for everything. Maybe there's a way that money works so in that Nick can produce some corn and I can go uh, build some build some buildings. I don't know. I can go work construction and Nick can go farm some food. And we are living on a Bitcoin standard and we live in a socialist society where it's like, yeah, it's socialist, but you can eat whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can go wherever you want. Nobody's telling you. You can take a lot of time off. Like, who's to say we can't build a better society? We could, but the problem has always been money. We don't really even know what government works. You know, um, something that's Mom interesting that, that you, I typically hear a lot, um, specifically in times like now and, and specifically around the holidays, right? Uh, you, you, you show up to family Thanksgiving, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Christmas here is coming around the next month. You know, you show up to family Christmas or whatever and you know uh somebody says 
hey, how's your Bitcoin doing? How's your Bitcoin doing? And I say, it's doing great, man. I own more than it, more of it than I've ever owned before. Oh, what's the price? You know, what's the price? Ooh, ooh. And this kind of makes me think. So think about this. And I wonder, I don't really know exactly what my thought is on this. I know it played in a second ago, but people are living in the fiat world. Think of it like this here. You're going to have to watch my example. You're living in the fiat world here and thinking about Bitcoin that's outside of the fiat system. And that's a that's a perspective, right? But then you and I, Griff, we're living uh, to the best of our ability. Now, we're living in this fiat world. We have to use and spend fiat. But, but thinking about Bitcoin within Bitcoin and looking out at fiat, right? And, and, uh, and I'm thinking about this in terms of unit of account, right? How we value things in, in money's terms, right? Because if we, if we live in the fiat world and we see fiat as, as how, we, how we understand the base reality of, it, of the economy, and we see other things priced in fiat, well, we're inherently wrong there. Inherently wrong because fiat itself is broken. Whereas we living in Bitcoin see things as they are, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not, in, not in dollar terms of how much Bitcoin is, but how much Bitcoin we own, how much Bitcoin is allocated all over the world. And everything outside of Bitcoin, uh, that's compared to Bitcoin, now you're seeing a little bit more of what reality is. Now, this fiat system is still over here creating all these distortions in the market, right? So there's still distortions that you're seeing through Bitcoin because they are reality, right? Because it is reality. And uh, man, th those are two huge perspective shifts. It's Bitcoin as your unit of account versus fiat as your unit of account, right? Whenever you're looking through the lens of fiat or Bitcoin, it's going to change what you see. Maybe it's a little bit in certain instances, and maybe it's a whole shit ton that changes. Um, but thinking about things, valuing things, viewing through the lens of fiat, bang, you're wrong right there. You're wrong. Yeah, but honestly. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, you, you go to build a skyscraper with a faulty foundation, <laughs> have problems, right? Maybe whenever you maybe whenever you put the um, the first bit of uh, of steel in the in the foundation, you know maybe you're just beginning. Maybe you're not going to run into problems there, but I bet you're going to run into problems down the road, right? Which which then comes to, to time preference. Okay, maybe we built this foundation not so good, but we're not going to have to deal with it until fifty years from now. You know that is that is a high time preference decision. We're we're thinking with now in turn uh, with now. In, in our vision and we're thinking okay how can we how can we the goal the of the puppet masters in a fiat world is to get everybody to be extremely high time preference it's extremely high time everything in buy all the products consume 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 make all the money make all the money see the the issue and it's is impossible now to not use a long-term plan you know it's a i have i mean like i oh, this is a difficult one I believe in using cheap debt if you're smart, if you know what you're getting yourself into. If you know what obligation you're getting yourself into, if you are taking a 0% interest credit card, loading that bad boy up with a $3,000 purchase, and you're going <coughs> to... <coughs> Sorry. If you're going to pay it off in a year, Godspeed, like, do it. I mean, like, I don't really... I don't see why that's a bad thing. I, I just really don't. Well, but, Griff, well, Griff, well, not only don't see why it's a bad thing, I don't see why in the world that exists today, why you wouldn't take advantage of some of those offers. Because sure. otherwise, it's hard to keep pace with what's going on in society. Now, do not get me wrong. If you do not have debt and you do not take on debt and you're building slow, I respect that. You're living in Oklahoma or Ohio. Not even Ohio anymore. Yeah, no, you're just still living in Ohio. You're not living in on a coast. You're not living wherever you want. You're not doing like anything you want. You're not like living in the size house that you want. You're not driving the car that you want. And do not get me wrong. Those are things that don't really matter. But at the same time, it's almost impossible nowadays to be a young person and go like, dude, like everybody has stuff. Like I'm just going to live with like nothing. And even then, 
And that's and that's if you want and to that's if you, print, which is the tough part, right? Well, you also could save all of your money, dude, and then they can just print 40% of it and you could have saved your entire life for a house and then can't have a house anymore. So what I'm saying is in the game today, you have to play. They've got it to a point where you do rent every like you go to buy an iPhone, bro. I do not even fucking think about buying that thing out. You want a thousand dollars today for this iPhone? Oh, or you you want thirty dollars? I'll finance it. Thank you. <laughs> you want thirty? You want thirty dollars a month for the rest of my life, and I get a new iPhone every year? I'll sign that contract. I don't really care. Like that's where everybody's at. That's where the fiat world has us. I don't. It's not. It's not that I couldn't pay the thousand dollars for the iPhone, but it's also like why? Why would I pay a thousand dollars for the iPhone? I'm gonna. I'm literally gonna be on like the goal in America. I'm gonna retire someday. I'm gonna have cash flow. I, I'm always going to need a phone. It's like, why not? Why not do it? Why would I pay a thousand dollars for this phone? I mean, you could resell it. <clears throat> Maybe if you buy it. I don't really know. But why would you not take advantage of certain things? Why would you, you're gonna buy? You're buying that SCV outright for your family because you live in a rough terrain. No, you're taking your whatever interest loan you get and you're buying that car. Now you're buying it buying only to refinance it later or sell it or trade it in. So you're never really buying it anyway. So I'm just saying like we've the fiat game. Yeah. You're hundred. If you start arguing the fiat game, I don't argue that it's not a game. I don't argue that it hasn't advanced the world. Maybe a little bit. I just argue that it's over because it's dude. Products are so shitty. Now you can spend 50 grand and get a shit product. That's fucking crazy. You can spend a hundred dollars at a dinner and it sucks. Like you spend a hundred dollars a dinner and you're like, I thought a hundred dollar dinners were like, you know, supposed to be really good. No, not even very good. Yeah, it's been like six, seven hundred dollars. And if people don't see the problem with that and why, like, young people that are getting these degrees and aren't worth anything, why that's not going to cause long term problems, you're living in the fiat world, like you said, in this little thing that Nick put together for us, like this little cube. And it's not even, it, to me, it's more like this, dude. It's like this candle. It's like the fiat world is here. This is the possibilities of the world now that we have Bitcoin. Truthfully, it is. Before then, maybe it was just this. Now, much bigger because money is different. <clears throat> we can bank the world. We can educate the world. Do a lot of things when you can change money. That's a big difference. I agree with you. This is the fiat game, bro. This is the, well, yeah, I mean, like I just, you know. I just rent everything, my iPhone, my car, my house, my, my my business, everything. It's fucking crazy. It blows my mind. It blows my mind how many people will just participate and like well, don't even care. Like people literally will just will play this game and they're like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm happy. Fuck off. Like, I'm happy with my two bedroom, one bathroom for life. Fuck off. And I'm just like... Man, I don't understand it. I don't even understand why in the world today, like, you know, or like with how many good ideas are out there, like socialist ideas, Nick, but good ideas. All socialist ideas are good ideas. It's hard, like, it's hard not to recognize one without recognizing the other. I want everybody to have a mansion. That is nice. This is a really good idea. I do too. Don't you? <laughs> everybody wants that. It's never been possible. I but mean, that like, ain't going to work. It's not going to work. But... It blows my mind if you go to like this. Uh, well, this is America, right? The richest country in the world. Fucking, if you watch Game of Thrones, like we are the gold company in the history of the world, too. Yeah, right. Maybe not much anymore because we almost pay a trillion dollars a year in interest. But uh, how have if you go to like the projects of almost any city, and it, it gets worse varying by state. But if you go to the projects in any city, you're gonna be like, people are really like living like this in america it'll it'll make you feel some type of way just because you're like that's fucking crazy why do i pay taxes for people to live like this now they're begging for money i don't get mad that people are begging for money most times i just get mad that it's like that's your best option why are we how can we be the richest country in the world and how can i pay 33 percent of my income for other people to live like this okay because, well, well, oh well, also, other also, people need health care oh we need to educate these people oh we need like it's just crazy how shitty money is in my opinion think, like I it's only because money is shitty that we do take into account the culture right <laughs> and uh, the the beliefs that are passed on generationally 
um, because you know you're exactly true. I mean, it's exactly correct. Like you go, you can go to like the bad part of town and and see like um, see the the slums, right? And like, man, it's just it's like li- the living standard is lower in certain places. Why is that? I don't know. I, but I think that there is. I think that there's a lot of cultural um, beliefs that are passed down. Uh, and, I, and I don't think that this is a racial thing at all. I think that this is a, I think that this is a geographic thing. Like here, here in Tulsa, North Tulsa is not a good part of town. You got everybody, everybody. Oh, in the, semi, it is different yeah. from different backgrounds, all, all, all different races, all different uh, everything, right? Everybody's in these areas and that dude, it's just a bad part of town. There's criminal activity happens there. Uh, people don't take care of their things. The cars are uh, old and ran down and ratty. The houses are old and ran down and ratty. The schools aren't as good. I mean, the whole thing, right? And, you know, is that because money is is corrupted? Yeah, well, yeah, of course, that's got a piece to do with it. But I think that also, somebody, <clears throat> if somebody has has the opportunity to be poured into by somebody that knows a little bit more than where they're at. Right. Let's say, uh, Griff, if, if your parents, uh, um, if your parents only ever worked at, uh, fast food restaurants and now you grow up and you think, you know what, I want to create and earn more for my family. I'm going to go start my own business and I'm going to go run it, operate it, and I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to make a huge impact in my society. I'm going to create a, life, a great life for, uh, for Sierra and our future family together. Well, you can't ask your parents about how to do that because they've never done that, right? That's a huge thing, and, yeah. and I think that that is exactly what's happening in the bad part of town, right? You've got mom and dad or grandma, grandpa, or aunt, uncle, whoever's raising these kids, right, that have never gone past a certain point that only know – what they've known, what their life has been. And if it's not been anything um, worth. Uh, well, they don't teach money in school. So you're a hundred percent right. Like, like people, if they don't teach it in public school, then the kid has a 0% shot at understanding. Well, or no. well, it's not even, it's not even necessarily just money, right? It's discipline. It's hard work. It's uh, r- personal responsibility. It's, it's being able to communicate and work with other people. It's, it's, it's being able to decipher what the market yeah. values so that you can go out and earn money. Now, once you're able, once you figure out how to earn money, then you got to know how to earn it and keep it and do do better with it and steward it, right? And that's one piece okay. as well. But even if you know how to work money and you got no skills as far as discipline, uh, uh, um, self respond to personal responsibility, hard work, if you don't have those things and integrity and in what you're doing, if you don't have those things, it doesn't matter anyways because you're probably not going to go do anything of value that helps you to earn yeah. a significant amount of money. I largely agree with that. It's just that like, you know, <laughs> made every kid become an engineer or we just said, fuck it. We're making every kid become a mathematician and engineer, this, that, or the other thing. We're building the utopia and how you build the utopia is just through education. But money is like wildly aside from, in my opinion, dude, a lot of people work hard. A lot of people like, you know, they might not know what, like what to do with the money. You're hundred percent right. And that's why I'm saying like a lot of people work hard. A lot of people have integrity. A lot of people do the right things for a long period of time. I don't think like everybody who, <clears throat> I don't think if you have nothing and you steal that you're like a bad person, I think you're doing what you have, like you're trying to survive. <laughs> like, and I think unfortunately in America, there's a lot of crime is just because people are trying to survive. Like, and that's a problem. Well, Griff, Griff, you said it the other night when we were talking about it. Um, you said for your first two years of, of uh, you know, getting out of college and starting real life, all you've done is identify who values my time more. I'm going to go yeah. do that thing. If somebody doesn't have a mind to understand that question, man, I've been working my ass off. I've been operating with extreme discipline. I've taken ownership. I'm operating with integrity doing X, Y, Z, but man, I'm not getting paid shit for it. Well, maybe, maybe society doesn't value what you're doing as much as you want. So go find something else where you can get paid the way that you want to get paid and, and by providing the value that the market actually needs. Right. I agree with you. I think it, 
yeah, I agree with you. I just think it's like <sighs> it feels unfair because the money is unfair, but I think there are several other factors that have have a huge impact on it. There's a large factor. I mean, there's a large factor of I mean, you know, not everybody Nick it, we played quarterback. Not everybody is Kyler Murray. Not everybody is like Cam Newton. Not everybody's Joe Burrow. Not everybody's Tom Brady. Honestly, quarterbacks are all fucking pretty unique. But what I'm trying to say is like not everybody has not everybody's Josh Allen. Josh Allen's not really that great, but he can throw the ball 80 yards and he can run like a four six and he's 250 pounds. So like is he that good of a quarterback? Honestly, you see it on Sunday all the time. Meh. But he's wildly talented. So people in real life, you know, it's always about working smart, smart, not working hard. Uh, people in real life, dude, it's like, you know, some people are just more talented than other people. And I'm not saying that to say like, oh, I'm smart or you're smart or just because we have a podcast. You know, I don't really think I'm very smart. I think I'm smart enough to know, oh, money. Let's think about every, let's do money first and everything else next. And then the cooler part is, is I actually like money. So I'm smart enough to realize that money is the process of all things. If you can understand the process of money and how we really got to where we're at now and follow history and like really understand money really well, everything else is pretty simple. So I was smart enough to know that because it's just the truth. I've chosen to study money more than I study other things. I'm not saying that everybody should do that or could do that or can do that or would do that or have the desire to do that. And so it's not only is it not fair, it's just like the current system that we're in place that is in place today. It just totally leaves out how important money is. I mean, we never learned. I only had one history teacher, bro. I was in seventh grade. I'll never forget it. His name was Mr. Clark, and I think he got fired for inappropriate, inappropriately <laughs> touching his teacher's assistant. But this uh, dude said before class started one time, because I was good in his class, bro. I was the only one who got good grades on, like, a couple of his tests. And you like being that kid, you know? Because it's just like, yeah, i just uh, interested. I just listened to you. The history is cool. And he was like, all you got to do is follow money. And so the, at the moment he said that at the beginning of the year, I was like, I'm getting an A in this guy's class because I was like, that's easy. Follow the money. And that's truly the thing. If you follow money, you can follow history. If you follow money, you can pretty much understand. How do you guys make money? Best, way, best question you could ever ask. But how do you guys make money? They have to tell you everything right then and there. The business has to literally tell you like everything if they'll answer that question. They, how do you make money? Well, we sell this and we do that. Okay, well, how do you make that? Like it's it's the basis of everything is how do you make money? What do you offer the world? What are you taking with your time and energy and effort? And what do you produce? Just like you said. And so that's why I feel like, okay, you just need to go find people who value your time more. You need to find what team will pay you the best. Or you need, you know, if you're not that smart, you need to find like the place with the best benefits that'll do this so that you have a kid and then that kid does this. Like, you got to real. I don't know. You have to have a lot of self awareness. But back to the original point, not everybody's going to do that because sixty million people in America have an IQ of like under a hundred, legitimately, and that is no fault of anybody. They're just not born to Josh Allen. They're born like a guy who couldn't make the high school football team at quarterback. They they have no shot. And let's say the baseline. Josh Allen is like the exceptional people in the world. A division one quarterback would be like, you know, your average guy or a college quarterback, so to speak. And a guy who doesn't make the high school team is the guy who can't do shit. Like does not, cannot do anything right. Drops the snap, can't do a handoff, can't go under center, can't say hike loud enough. Okay. There's a lot of those in America. And I do feel like if you want to say, oh, we're a constitutional republic, then it is our government's duty to try to help them or is our society's duty to try to help them. But we don't live in a constitutional republic. So we don't really have enough money or any way or any process to actually help anybody. We're not, we're not building a, a society that's a constitutional republic. We built mob rule democracy in America. That's what's happened. I mean, it's pretty out there at this point. I mean, who can build the biggest mob, get them vote? <laughs> President goes in there. President starts signing all kinds of executive orders and shit and making his four years really count. 
well, they suck. Then the next guy comes in and, no, he goes hard for another four years writing executive orders and getting rid of this and doing that. And it's uh, very fiat, you know what I'm saying? But in no way, shape, or form is what these guys are signing ever going to help low-income individuals get educated about money. Why the fuck would they do that? Those are their sheep. Why would they educate their sheep? Why slaves, so to speak? There's slavery in this world today. I mean, there's real slavery, but there's also this thing called financial slavery, finance slavery, people who do not understand it and take advantage of them, like you were saying earlier. So back all the way to the next point, like an hour ago, yeah. about in my opinion, how it's like, if you're on Twitter selling stuff, how do you kind of regulate and, you know, make sure that somebody doesn't get fucked? Bro, how do you ensure, ensure retards don't get fucked? And I'm not talking like people you'd even know are retarded. Just real, like people was like, yeah, bro, you're not doing a lot. Like, you just don't get it. Just you your regular Joe Schmo that just can't figure it out. The list guy. The list guy. Right. And it's like, you love those time. people, bro. He didn't do his homework. Don't Whatever. Do just doesn't get it, man. Just Got doesn't get it. About it. Maybe, maybe he has a good attitude. really doesn't fucking matter. He just doesn't get it. So it doesn't matter. He doesn't get it. It doesn't matter. So he's ultimately, he's going to struggle. So if you're building a constitutional republic, it shouldn't matter. Uh, I don't think homelessness or anything 0%, like there's no utopia. I don't believe in a utopia, but it shouldn't matter. Like you're bad golf. You know what I'm saying? When you play good golf, you want to tell everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to be like, dude, I just shot like two under. I, I did great. But when you play bad, why, you don't ever want to tell anybody unless your bad golf is Everybody else is good golf. Oh, I shot four over. You shot four over. It was like fucking amazing. Yeah, it's like the worst day I've had in three weeks. You want your bad golf to be so good, it's better than everybody else's good golf. And in America, we have not built a society that is any better than anybody else. Really. I mean, like, maybe better than a fractional, you know, some. There's some. But have we really built anything that's like what I'm talking vision, which they had it right? No. We, we have not. We have had to stray away from it because of the manipulation of money. And it has really cost a lot. I mean, dude, fucking Jim Crow and all of that shit. And now, like, I, I mean, like, I don't believe in socialism and all that and whatever. But, yeah, I mean, the system failed these people. And now they're, like, trying to, like, vote them in so that it'll help them and, like, forgive student loans and do all this shit. But as you and I know... It, they can't actually control what money is. They can't, you just, like, you can't, like, it's the only, it's the, honestly, money is the only true protector of sovereignty because you can only fuck with it so much. You'll get a revolution. You'll get a revolt. You'll get a war. <laughs> you'll get, I mean, something will happen. If you fuck it up so bad that, you know, not enough people's life's good enough, you won't have an empire. Like, enough people have to be happy so that, you know, you can have a castle and live in it and nobody's storming it. So, yeah. all I'm saying is, where we're at now, we both kind of agree. It's like, you, everybody can keep riding these fucking coattails, bro, but this shit's going down. Like, there's no fucking way. And if you only live in the fucking wick of the candle and not the whole candle, you know, in the next 20 years, your kids, you're going to need your kids' help. You're not going to be able to help your kids. You're going to be like... So, how do I do lightning invoice for my work or for this or for that? And your kids can be like, "Mom, just download, put, boom, done." Like, <laughs> kids can be like, well, "I used to use Apple. What is this new one in this new store that's just on the internet?" Like, you're gonna have to be into it because a lot of shit's about to change. So. I mean, there's so many things that are out there now, bro. So many theories, like so many Joe Rogan episodes that are out there. Like, people are thinking different now. Think shit has changed. It is not the same. I feel like the world's a little bit more awake now. And I like that. I think that's interesting. I like that people have a lot of shitty opinions. There's a lot of shitty opinions out there. But I like opinions more than I like people not giving a fuck. Have an opinion. Do your thing. If you have an opinion... Just be open to changing it is my only like be open to the fact that you could be wrong. You might not know anything because honestly, nobody really knows anything. So you're kind of a fool. The more you think, you know, the bigger of a fool you are. Like, honestly, it's hard to always be like that, but it's so true. I don't know. Well, the, Griff, I have enjoyed, I've enjoyed this conversation. I think it's been a fun one. We might have to split this one into a part one, part two, because we are at an hour and 34 minutes. And I think that both parts Kind of the first part of the conversation was 
almost kind of laying the premise for what your what what the back half of the conversation ultimately kind of fleshed out. So I think we might have to break this sucker into part one, part two. But I thought it was a really fun conversation. I thought we talked about some pretty interesting stuff. Um, we would love to talk about more interesting interesting stuff with you, the listener, the, the watcher. Um, come check us out uh, on Twitter. It is at Nick and Griff Show. That is N-Y-C-A-N-D-G-R-I-F-F-S-H-O-W. Nick and Griff Show. You can find us on pretty much all the platforms, I believe, uh, at Nick and Griff Show. Uh, so check us out there. Um, if you're not watching, we do have video on Spotify and on YouTube. So if you're not watching, come watch us. Uh, we just kind of hang out and sit in front of the camera and chat about stuff. So um that that would be fun and um uh, man uh i think we're gonna have some good changes coming up here in the show uh in the structure of the show come 2023 um griff and i have have, have commenced conversation about that and what that's going to look like so excited about that excited for um you know beginning a, another year we're coming up on the one year anniversary griff january 8th is our one year anniversary so we are just a couple months out from that. Excited about that. Excited about what we've created so far in this past year or so, a little less than a year. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this has been uh, this has been a fun little conversation. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.